Welcome everybody to the Planning and Development Committee meeting um, of Wednesday the 8th of December. Uh, this is my first meeting as chair of this committee, so please excuse any uh, mistakes that I've made. So, and welcome everyone. We, the Benalla Rural City Council, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting. We pay respect to their elders past and present and to the elders from other communities who may be here today. Uh, do we have any apologies? Yep. Uh, confirmation of the Minister's previous meeting. The recommendation is to the Minister of the Planning and Development Committee meeting held on Wednesday, the 3rd of November 2021, be confirmed as a true and accurate record of the meeting. Moved, Councillor Davis. Seconded to Councillor Hearn. All those in favour? Carried. Um, this committee meeting is conducted in accordance with the Local Government Act of 2020 and the Benalla Rural City. Council Governance Rules of 2020. Um, the meeting is recorded and live streamed to the YouTube channel. Uh, Behaviour of both members of the gallery and the council members have to be uh, exemplary, as it always is. Uh, disclosure of conflict of interest is in accordance with the Local Government Act of 2020. A councillor must declare any conflict in of interest pursuant to section 130 of the act in any item of this agenda so if anyone has a conflict would you please make that known to the chair and you'll have to uh, remove yourself at that time does anyone have a conflict no, no Mr. uh public question time do we have any questions uh agenda item who the draft domestic animal management plan 21 to 25, and this is the hearing of commissions. But before we start, we have one speaker on this. So, uh, David Horan. Welcome, David. Um, if you stand at the lectern over there, if you can. But be aware, we only have a couple of microphones on the table, so you'll have to speak loudly and, um, and towards the microphone if you can. David, is, is that a handout for the councillors? Yes, it is. It's just basically uh, what I'm speaking on um, today. So, if you find this some points and stuff like that, you guys have got. Um, Before you start, David, because of time constraints, you have three minutes um, and we'll give you a warning when you're getting towards the end of that time. Yep. Thank you. Welcome, David. Thank you. Uh, so my name is David Warren. Um, I'd like to say good evening to Council. And everyone, um, so my name is David Warren, and these are my guys up, uh, for me, where I've been here with all Um, I'm here to talk about the problems of the leash on the stuff that I've seen on Facebook, um, earlier this month, and I just wanted to talk about my experience, um, as well with, with my dogs and stuff. When I'm walking through the park or when I'm down doing volunteer in the park running that, I always have people either with dogs on leash or off leash. And the off leash dog uh, always coming up to um, try to um, greet Benny and stuff like that, which is as Benny's a guy dog in harness, he's not allowed to interact with any other dog. Um, most people are pretty good as far as um, their dogs on leash walking around the park. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that aren't. Um, so um, dogs are running up to um, Benny or any other person that's walking around the park on the other occasion when they've got other dogs in that. Um, and when it comes to me personally, I start to panic because I don't know that the dog is going to be like and then he's going to attack uh, my guide dog or myself. Um, guide dogs themselves, or guide dogs Victoria, um, train these dogs to a very higher level. And uh, when they're getting trained, at the end of their working life, they can work in from $10,000 up to $50,000. Um, and most of that is um, um, funding some from government um, and most of it I think is from um, uh, entrepreneurs and fundraising and all that sort of stuff. 
Um, so basically, I'd like to see uh, dogs, especially in the gardens area, be kept on leash. Um, I've had three guide dogs, all three guide dogs have been attacked. My last guide dog before Benny had been retired because of her last attack. So that's basically running down the um, drain as far as um, that's concerned, as well as me having to having a to lose a guide dog in the um, train of another one. Um, so basically, um, I am in favour of stop on leash um, within our community. The um, I don't know what's happening with on leash areas and stuff. I know there's certainly. David, areas. you have three minutes up. Do you have much more to go? We can give you attention. No, I can do this a little bit more. All right, just finish it off. Yeah, um, I know there's certain areas within Manila where the dogs can be on, on or off leash in a park area. Um, I don't know um, if that's communicated very well within this community. And what I'd like to see happen is people either um, get um, um, or basically a fine of some sort, um, and then that see that money going to the community, like in Temple Park and stuff like that. But the one is the other result from So thank you for letting me go and talk tonight. Thank you very much, David. And would you mind answering any questions that the councillors yeah, may have? Problem. Does anyone have a question of David's? Uh, Councillor Firth. Yeah, <clears throat> through the chair. Thanks for your presentation, David. With regards to the uh, Victorian Guide Dogs Association, do they, are you aware of them putting out any guidances towards for local governments? They do. They've had a um, big fundraiser um, started um, in April, um, and I was hoping to have some of that information for you guys. Um, the, all that information is on the Guide Dog website, Guide Dog Victorian website. Um, and the um, thing, uh, the the um, information is from started in April from uh, International Guide Dog Day, and that information is all around this type of stuff within the community and things like that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Gannon, right now, then Councillor Davis. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Thank you, Dave. Uh, coming today and thanks for your presentation. Uh, you mentioned that many can't or shouldn't interact with other dogs. Okay. And if something like that happens and if you're walking somewhere and what happens to your day after that? Does Benny react the same way? Does help you? Um, it can, a lot of things can happen. She may be all right yeah. um, and just work normally. Um, we might both being in my last guide dog were attacked in Main Street. My last guide dog uh, virtually froze from that point. Every time a dog came in anywhere near it, um, which meant that we had to retire. Mm -hmm. Benny um, was attacked on the very last day of my, it was my graduation day here in uh, Benalla, before I was allowed to the even start um, working there on my own. Um, and we were lucky that um, she's been pretty good since. So um, it's been a couple of times since, but um, what they'll do is they'll start to cheer and stuff like that, causing anxiety, get anxiety about having to work, to work in those sort of areas, especially when you guys or other dogs come around. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Davis. Um, so thanks very much for your presentation. Um, I've got a bit of background information. One of my daughters does train um, guide dogs. Yeah. I think she's had five dogs now, and I think one's made it. And she's had those dogs trained for that first 12 months yeah. initial period. So there's not too many dogs that she gets to where your dog Benny is. Um, my question to you is, um, and you're walking, you're out walking all the time with your dog. What what percentage of pre, what percentage of dogs do we have? 
um, around that are, that are sort of coming up, coming up to you at times. Is there, is there, a, is, is it half of them? Is it three quarters of the dogs are not on leads? What? Um, I just, I've got trying to get an idea in my own mind. I walk the lake too, but. But not as much. I'm not out with the dog as much as you are. But yeah, um, the main the main area I don't go to is basically go to around go to the island. Yes. Because um, that was one of the main areas that I knew dogs of fish were allowed. Yeah. Um, it's it's probably around a quarter to a half yeah. that are off leash. Um, that I find my my concern big concern is to Someone's going to get hurt in that month because um, dogs um, they running around and stuff like that. They can get excited. I, I heard a couple of weeks ago a little a, a little child um, was having a sandwich or something to eat, and a dog's come along and just tapped him down about it. If I might follow up question. Um... I hear about these these dogs that are well disciplined. And I've, I've more than pleased got a well disciplined dog. But how many when you're going around the lake or when you're walking, and the dog and the dog's off its loose and its owners, and how many of them can actually call the dog back and keep it away from um, socialising with other dogs? Yeah, uh, look, most most people that um, that I um, see are usually pretty good. They're able to call the dogs back. Unless the dog's a, a further away from them. further away, uh, mate, is that, is that, if people say that's coming, some, most times I've um, got on my way. Um, but there's still a lot that won't. And you'll, you'll, and I'll turn around and I'll say, oh, the dog's friendly, you don't need to worry and stuff like that. Well, <laughs> thanks very much. No worries. Uh, are there any other questions for David? No, thank you very much, David, for your submission, and um, we'll be hearing the submissions in the February the 16th meeting of the Planning and Development Committee. Thank, thank you David. very much for coming on tonight. Thank you for allowing me to talk. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Uh, the report of the uh, Domestic Animal Management Plan is uh, Wayne. Absolutely left. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, Mr. Chair, present for the Planning and Development Committee the draft domestic animal management plan submissions report. The plan was put in the local inside uh, and for our virtual media pages as well. Conducted a uh, screening post at the, on the main street and on the Vanilla Lakeside Market, Church of the Bird. We received 104 submissions, which is 100 more than what we did last time. Since <laughs> <laughs> we ever started developing the domestic animal management this is the most ever received for submissions. Um, I thank all the submit submitters who actually take time out and speak to our staff um, at those uh, listening posts. And the, the submissions will be considered and presented to the council. Uh, are there any questions of Nilish? Yeah. Um, as you said in your report, it's a hundred, like it's it's just overwhelmingly more than we normally get um, on any matter for that for that matter. Um, any idea or stuff to did the listing posts and so forth? Is it is there a reason that we've come up with such a high or great increase in, in the number of people that have actually taken time? And I've gone through everyone. It's quite amazing. Uh, they're really good submissions, just from a tick tick to a, the letters. So they obviously feel strongly about this issue. Um, is, do you think that's the main? Yeah, um, it's also uh, targeting the right places. So like we went to Churchill Reserve. That we know there's right. a keen group of people walking there. The market as well, the uh, store was positioned in a way that we were close to somebody that was selling animal related products. Mm -hmm. So it was designed in a way that, it, and it was towards the walking track, so the, the most attraction would be for people. Yeah. 
Thank you. Any other questions, Mosh? If not, the recommendation is on page 10 that the submissions be received. Move Councillor Hearn, second Councillor Burke. Like to speak, Councillor Hearn? Yes, I'll give up. I'd just like to thank David for coming, but also thank all of the people that have put in submissions. As has been said, 104 is a large number. It's good to see that everybody in the community wants to have a say and be heard, and I'm happy that we've got to read them and hopefully something that we can all look at in the next, um, before the next meeting. Thank you, Councillor Hearn, Councillor Perth. Yes, Mr Chair, with regards to, um, like the, the number of submissions is, is impressive. Uh, it, two things it says to me is that this is something that's incredibly important to the community and we need to uh, respond in some way. And um, the other thing is it would show that we're finally getting a bit better at community consultation, I would suggest, um, which is a, it is a very good thing and important thing as well. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I'd like to thank uh, Ted for coming today and speaking, and, and Benny too. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's really good to see the number of people who come forward and give their opinion. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about the submissions, but there will be a meeting to consider the submissions and we will definitely have other meetings to consider what we can do and which way we can go with this uh, uh, community input. Uh, as uh, Councillor Furt suggested, it's, it's a good improvement in our community engagement as well as you said, strategically positioning the uh, stalls and targeting the right groups. It's I think the real improvement in the engagement. Thank you. Thank you, would anyone else like to speak? Yes, um, once again, David, thank you very much for coming along tonight and all the um, submitters to put in, put in this, there's some really good submissions in, 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 the, in there. Um, consultation is great. I think, I think it's a case of really we've, cons we've consulted on a product that's, that's really close to people's heart and it's pretty close to people and uh, it's going to be good when it comes back and the ball's in our court to actually deliver deliver on what these um, what these people want because there's uh, uh, there's some straightforward messages in those um, submissions so it'll be good to see how we we handle the uh, situation moving on thank you thank you Captain Davis if uh, no one else would like to speak all those in favour that's carried thank you thank you um, item number three planning application to use and develop land for a camping and caravan park at 35 Gun Road Vanilla. I believe we have a speaker on this on Zoom. Okay. Um, That's, can you hear me? Yes, welcome, yes, Rowan. Uh, Thank you. But, um, uh, Rowan, you have three minutes to speak. Um, when you get towards the end of that time, we'll give you a, a warning if you wish to continue a little bit longer, we will give you an extension. Thank you. It's good evening and thank you, Chair, Councillor Claridge, for the opportunity to discuss the planning application for a camping and caravan park at 35 Gun Road, Benella. I acknowledge the Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Councillors of Benella Rural City Council. My name is Rowan Pollard and I am the Director of 35 Gun Road, Benella Development Proprietary Limited. We have submitted a planning application for a camping and caravan park, which consists of 112 cabin sites and 22 caravan sites and associated amenity buildings. 35 Gun Road is a 9.2 hectare site located on the south side of Gun Road. The land to the east of the site is through Gun Road and has an approved planning permit for a motel. The applicant for the motel also has to upgrade Gun Road and the intersection to Midland Highway. This will include curb, channel and a footpath to the south side of Gun Road. The land to the west of the site is 39 Gun Road and is a vacant block of land. As part of our planning submission, the proposal included upgrading Gun Road for the length of the boundary and will include curb, channel and footpath to the south side. 
Prior to use, and as is required with regulations, the caravan park will be registered with council. We are also in the process of becoming a member with the Victorian Caravan Parks Association. Throughout the planning process, we have engaged with the council officers to ensure that our proposal is in keeping with council's vision and requirements. This engagement commenced prior to the lodging of the application and has continued and I will believe continue throughout the life of the project. As part of this engagement, we have been requested to increase the number of caravan sites from 22 to 50, include a pool, include an ablution block, and include a playground suitable for, for children, which we have agreed to include without hesitation. The proposed development is located on the northeast corner of 35 Gun Road and takes up approximately half the site, about four hectares. There is a large setback of approximately 35 metres from Gun Road to the clubhouse. This zone provides visitor and staff car parking, as well as being heavily landscaped. The caravan park has been designed to incorporate three separate communal areas. The front, front zone incorporates the clubhouse, which has been, been designed for entertaining and socialising. The middle zone is the active area and includes a putting green, bowling green and multi-use pavilion and will also include the pool that has been requested. And the third zone is the park with gardens and will also include the children's play area. But, um, the architecture of the clubhouse and pavilion is to create a building that is familiar with the local district. We have taken inspiration from the local shearing sheds with the timber frame pose and corrugated roof as well as the large verandas. Brian, your three minutes is up. Would you like an extension? Yes, please. I'm um, almost done. Turn and second to Councillor Davis, all those in favour. Another key feature of the design has been providing passive surveillance throughout the caravan park. This is achieved by the following key design principles. Having sight lines from the clubhouse through to the pavilion and onto the park, having good glazing to the clubhouse and pavilion, having cabins that, that overlook the parks and the communal areas, and eliminating corners or paths that have no surveillance and no blind spots. A detention basin has also been included to the south of the site, and this will be pumped to the legal point of discharge in accordance with engineering requirements. I also note that a condition of the proposed planning permit is to prepare a management plan for the caravan park, as well as a complaints register for, which will include a mechanism for the surrounding residents to make a complaint. Given the proximity of the Benalla Township, the proposed caravan park does not include a general store, cafe or restaurant. Thank you for your time this evening and I respectfully request that you approve the planning application for a camping and caravan park at 35 Gun Road, Benalla. Ron, are you willing to take questions from the councillors? Yes, I am. Uh, does anyone have a question, Ryan? Um, yeah, Ryan, thanks for your presentation. Um, with regards to, I understand that the, the project's going to be taken in stages. Correct. I'm just wondering what the stage one includes. We know that the, the works... Um, the roads and curbing and so forth has to be done first mm -hmm. um, before you start inside the boundary. However, can you fill us in on what stage one will uh, comprise of? It's basically the idea, and this will be formed at um, part of this, a staging plan, but it will include the clubhouse and a certain number of sites that um, behind that. And we progressively just moved down the site from the northern end on Gun Road through down to the southern end. But, um, so, but it's, so it basically goes from the frontage all the way across, but um, going down. But uh, I expect there'll be about 20, but, um, 20 to 30 per stage. Good evening, Rowan. It's so then I um, just wondered um, what stage would, so if you're going down, 
Mm -hmm. Would the pool be in the same stage as your putting green? Area? Correct. Yes. And so then the next stage would be the back path with the gardens and the. Yeah. That's correct. But um, it's really a capital management, but um, for better term, it's we can only spend so much at a time. But um, so we need to. The clubhouse is a big investment. The bowling green, putting green, pavilion, and now pool is also a very major investment. But um, and then also the park at the end. That um, if you look at the landscaping plans, that uh, it will also be be an investment there as well. So we're just staging that out to basically have those three major elements that, um, in separate stages. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thanks, John. Um, I'm just wondering, in the stage one, you've got the pool and the, and the club room and things, will stage one include the cabins or will it be the tent and your caravan sites? Uh, you know, which, which will come first, the cabins or the caravan? It uh, will be a mixture of cabins but, um, and some caravan sites. Uh, Councillor Davis and Councillor Davis. Uh, Peter, Councillor Peter Davis. Um, um, a question just following that. So it looks like the, the um, your cabins go in because they'll be self-contained self with toilets and showers. Correct. If you go in with the caravans then, will it be just self-contained caravans because that's when the ablution block it would have to go in when you've got, if you start taking caravans on per se, wouldn't you have to have your ablution block in there before you yes. get caravans in? That's where looking at um, having the the caravans being self-sufficient as well. But um, although as we progress forward, or particularly for that first stage, that um, having self-sufficient caravans, but, um, and there's a lot on the market now that have that ability. But, um, and then as we get to that, second stage where we include the evolution block, then it'll be open to people without the being self-sufficient. Follow well, push by mate. Um, having stayed in a few caravan parks over the years, uh, will you be managing this yourself or will you be putting managers in? It will be managing it with managers, with directly engaged managers. But, um, so we'll have someone on site and a caretaker yeah. on site. You know the importance of, of, you know, a really good caravan park is only as good as its manager. Absolutely, understand that. But um, and that's why we're going to be making sure we get a very, very good manager but, um, to run it. Because at the end of the day, that um, we've got a lot of financial risk on this. That um, and without a good manager, then we lose out financially. Thanks for answering the question. You didn't have to. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, this is Councillor Gunaratna. Um, <clears throat> reading through the objections that you have received for your application, one of the objectors said, uh, this application is a large high density residential unit complex, not a caravan tourist park. So would you like to address that? Can I speak to that a bit? What do you it's, think? It, um, well, it does fall under the caravan park, but um, I don't think the planning scheme actually talks about being a caravan park, being a tourist park. But, um, I mean, that's two separate elements there. But um, we've got cabins and we also have uh, caravans there and we've increased the number of caravans, but, uh, which has been requested from council but, um, because of that reason, which we've obliged. I just have a quick one again, Rowan, sorry. Just wondered, have you thought about putting in a toilet dumping site for your caravan? It's, uh, I would have assumed that would have been part of the evolution block that we provide. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Davis, Councillor Davis. Yeah, thank you. So Rowan, how many years do you think it will take to complete before that this project is complete? With the, cab with the cabins, caravan, tent, all of that. Is that 18 months, two years, three years? It's, I'd be conservatively looking at it, be up to five years to complete. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is Councillor Gunaratna again. 
I just wanted to ask with the growing electric cars in Australia and worldwide, have you considered providing any facilities for any electric car owners who would visit your car or caravans or probably your cabins to make it easy to charge their cars while they enjoy their holiday or stay in your car? So I'd love to provide that, but um, I think that'd be a great addition to the to the caravan park but, um, to provide a a uh, sustainable development, but, um, and that's part of our goal. So I would expect that uh, there would be one included. Thank you. That's great to hear that. Thank you. That's all right, Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so Rowan, uh, given that you thought this project might be completed, say in about five years, although it's difficult getting supplies and things at the moment because of COVID, um, and I'm aware that um, there is some rezoning going on in surrounding areas from your land to mm -hmm. um, So and then if that is rezoned from farming to residential, would you consider that, you know, maybe your plans to finish, to complete the caravan slash camp area could be avoided and we may become residential? Is that on the agenda perhaps, or is that just sort of not thought of at the moment? It's, well, we're just looking at the, um, at the plans. We're not developing the entire site. It, uh, if there is residential in the future, then we've got opportunity to develop the balance of the land as residential. Uh, are there any other questions for Ron? Ron? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Because though I know that um, people are talking about caravan parks now as, and cabins in caravan parks as a solution to um, low cost housing in regional areas. It's not just Manila, it's all over that this is a problem. Um, so I'm just, I am concerned about the high density of these cabins, one, two, three bedroom, um, car parking spaces. I know, um, you know, one space for one bedroom and two for the others, and, but we've only got eight visitors parking spaces. I'm just concerned that, I know that the, the amenities block is fabulous, I love it, um, but I'm just concerned about the density of people living there and um, I don't know, just wanting to talk, if you could just tell me a little bit things about the, the density or you don't worry about it. It's, uh, no, we've um, done the design at, um, in accordance with the planning scheme at, um, and what we can do, but uh, we've put as much breathing space in the project as possible by having those three different um, community areas. So we've got the, the community uh, clubhouse at the front, the active area, and then the park at the area and try and create as much open space that, um, in the caravan park as possible. But, um, but uh, and I'm personally, I don't see, uh, that, uh, and with the landscaping, it, um, I don't see a problem with the density that, um, on the site. Are there any other questions of Rowan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Rowan. I have one question. If, um, and when, if and when this is uh, asked, when would you start? Uh, building it's well first part would be getting the condition one and the planning conditions that um approved at, um and endorsed at, uh, and then would so would look at uh, probably six months to get that uh those endorsements and everything sorted that um and then we'll look at commencing construction we've spoken to financiers and we've got um finance ready to go to commence construction at, um mid next year Thank you for your presentation, Brian. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, getting back to the report, uh, Joel. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. There is one permission that uh, the CA will read aloud. Okay, Mr. Jones from Herbert Stone, uh, submission to be read aloud. As per Previous objection, I wish to add high density housing under guise of camping caravan park. 
There's no mention of body corporate or landlords if can lease sites after individually purchasing sites. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I present to the planning and development committee proposal to use the belt land at 35 Gun Lake from Hell for the purpose of camp and caravan park. The land is located on the south side of Gun Road, approximately 155 metres west of the intersection with the River Highway. The proposal will provide for 140 sites, including 180 lots for cabins and 22 caravan sites, including a cabin used as a management resident. Cabins will be prefabricated buildings containing one, two, and three bedroom dwellings. And in addition, the site will contain a clubhouse, containing a meeting room, computer room, lounge, kitchen, and dining areas, and a recreation room with the kitchen and the yard. Two accesses will be obtained into the site of Gun Road. The applicant also proposes to install road and footpath into infrastructure, which includes a steel road to the front edge of the site. In accordance with the infrastructure design. The sealed road will link to the future sealed road to the front of the approved motel at 3 Gun Road Vanilla on the corner of Gun Road and Mansfield Road. The proposal was advertised and two objections have been received, and the summary of objections is provided on page 14 of the report. The proposal has been referred to the Country Fire Authority, who advises of no objections subject to conditions. Relating to creaking hydrants and uh, internal road width provisions. The main issues with regards to this proposal relate to the appropriateness of the use for the zone, traffic considerations, car parking, and amenity issues. The recommendation is on pages 24 to 33 of the report for your consideration. Are there any questions of Joel? Would have been thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Joel, is it not true that this project really depends on the uh, project completion almost of the proposed motel on the corner of Midland Highway and Guns Lane, just with, with regards to sewerage and so forth? How? Uh, it, it would make it more uh, feasible. Uh, finance perspective, yeah, because the, yes, they'd have to connect the sewer and water across on the head of the highway and also construct roadways right there for the, for the side. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, so the things, uh, thank you, Mr. Chill. Joel, just in regards to the stages of the development, do the council and your team go out and inspect? Upon completion of each of those stages, or is that it's not sort of something that's part of the recommendation? Uh, it's not part of the recommendation. Uh, in an ideal world, we would do all the sort of go out there and have a look and see if everything's up to it. Yeah, so one place to home. Um, how is the property rated with so many dwellings and so many people living on on it? And, and looking at when you look into it, it says um, leasing arrangements for long term stay, and, and it looks as though some of the facility will be leased out on a longer than normal basis. It could be nearly term uh, permanent accommodation in some mm -hmm. shape or form. I'm reading between the lines. Um, how is the how is the property like that rated? Sorry, about that. Yeah. Can we take that on notice? Thank you. Are there any other questions? Joel, so going back to the density, um, I'm sure that there are differences in the allowable density of a caravan camping area versus a residential area. So if and when the land around is rezoned for residential, does that make a difference to the total land slash camping area 
or they because they've already got it there, they've got it there. Um, Pretty much if they've already got it there, it's mm -hmm. proved that it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's no doubt that it's a reduced density. Uh, however, you've also got quite small densities in the Melbourne. In what In a, uh, urban areas of Melbourne. In Melbourne. Yeah, uh -huh. which is different to Manila, of course. Mm. But can those blocks can still comply with your normal residential components of the planning scheme? And we've got those same components within our planning scheme. Davis. Joel, um, moving forward in five years, and we get quite a few people living out there in Denver City. Um, what controls? We're putting controls on the operation now, but what controls can council have on that facility moving forward when it becomes a residential area around it and all that area is subdivided and cut up and so forth? What um, I see there's some curfews with times and all that. There's, um, there's, any, there's all the rules and regulations that that, uh, that equate to the housing caravan parks and so forth relate. Yes, so they and they retain. If you as your planning parent and it's subject to site management plans, uh, emergency management plans, and all the like, they remain with the planning permit and perpetuity. So, so even if there's development around it in the future, those permit conditions remain and the management conditions that we can so, Thank you. Councillor mm -hmm. Gowan, right now. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Joel, uh, so one of the objections was well, said, this is a large identity residential unit complex. And I read the report and you mentioned the WCAC uh, ruling in the past from another council. And it says based on that, uh, the cabin accommodation can be provided for permanent residency as well. Uh, would you be able to speak to that WCAC decision uh, that you mentioned on the report and that objection a bit? So, so the VCAT report, outlines that under the Residential Tenancy Act, you cannot place a uh, duration of a permit that reduces the duration of tenancy. So it can be on, the tenancy can be on the caravan park. So the tribunal member is saying that if you, uh, because of this provision, that uh, that the planning scheme envisages that there will be long-term permanent residency in Caravan Park, which is allowed within the zone. And, and, and that's at a normal density that's usually provided within the cabin, you know, normal cabin, cabin size. Uh, so that, that's what the tribunal hearing is getting at. And also the tribunal hearing, uh, the tribunal order, also outlines that the it's normal for caravan parks to provide for uh, some sort of affordable housing. So that, that's envisaged within the scheme uh, to allow for this type of development. And that's pretty much what it comes to. Thank you, Joe. Councillor Davis, just following on that, um, Joe. I always had the belief that you often saw people had to pick their caravans up, take them out on, on the road and bring them back in so that it wasn't seen as a, that they weren't, that the, they'd broken that, that rule. So is it, has all this new legislation come in, is it? I'm not sure if it's new. Um, but you used to have to take it, had, had to vacate the premises and come yeah. back every so often. And the Residential Tenancy Act, I think, is 1927. So, so if it's... Thank you. If there's no other questions of Joel, yes, Mason's got one question. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess that the big question that I've got is I know, or I'm looking at this, I'm not speaking for any of the other councillors, I'm looking at this as a possibility for low cost housing accommodation for people in Manila, which we desperately need. But I'm worried about 
the, this sort of development kind of getting in as a caravan park, not being listed as a low cost housing venture. And I just wonder whether that's the development that we're wanting for the Nala or whether we want to do it, uh, have that sort of development a bit more um, thought out socially um, with all of those social impacts in um, that situation. That's that's just a question mark that I've been hanging over my head. I'm just Sorry, wondering. What the well, my question is, is this the way that Vanilla wants to develop low-cost housing for people? That's the question. I think if the use studies and uses to provide to that within the framework. So, so therefore, if, if it's uh, allowable within the planning scheme, then it's uh, a type of use that uh, it's foreseen to be allowable in this sort of case. And, and within a farming zone at the moment, where you don't have those uh, additional amenity issues around it, which you, you may do in the future, at the moment you don't. Uh, that, that's also seen as, as beneficial at the moment. The, the uh, yeah, what? Tricky. Yeah, thank you, John. That's helpful. Thank you. If there are no other questions, the recommendation is in 45 parts, starting from page 24 and going through page 33. Would someone like to move that recommendation? I'll leave it as read, I won't read it out. Council first, seconded. I'd like to speak to Council first. Uh, yes, thank you, through the Chair. With regards to um, the 45 parts of the recommendation, I have read every single one of them, and the it would seem to me that uh, Benalla does have a need, and in the near to middle, middle um, medium future, we're going to need this kind of housing more. And, I, and I'm, I'm calling a spade a spade. It's, it's, it's affordable housing. Um, the long-term leasing, it does not concern me. Uh, the, the facts are the facts. This is a project that is going to deliver to Benalla something that uh, we do need. I think it is in an appropriate position. Um, I know uh, that there is already a similar type of project that's already been completed and been there for many years. It's on the other side of Benalla. And um, I also know that many of the residents there absolutely love the place. So the other thing that I would suggest to the council is that this is a good sign as far as the future of Benalla. The future of Benalla is one of growth. And that growth brings a whole lot of things that Benalla in the past didn't have or require. Benalla is going to need lots of different things in the future. And this is but one of them. Um, I'm very glad that the the, pro, the uh, proposal has been put up uh, and the, pro, the, the uh, developer has been prepared to work with the council um, and appreciates some of the concerns and some of the things that we've asked for and he's uh, gone ahead and put them in. Um, so Without going on any much much further, Mr. Chair, I, I do uh, recommend this to the council, and I I do recommend this to the future of Benalla. Thank you, Councillor Bird. Councillor, I would love to speak, except for Councillor Bird said it all. No. <laughs> if that's the case, would anyone else like to speak? Uh, Councillor Jim and Councillor Bird. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, only to support the recommendation that's on the floor tonight. Um, uh, I, I appreciate the um, applicant answering many questions, and I think one of the questions Councillor Davis asked was really important around the the management of the um, of the uh, facility when it's completed. 
and um, having the right management in there to um, to really uh, capture its its productive operations and, and what is fitting within our community. So uh, I think that's going to be really important going forward. Um, I acknowledge Joel's work in getting this recommendation to where it is. It seems to have captured a lot of the uh, a lot of the discussion. And um, and I think also too this will be uh, a good opportunity for our community to have um, uh, a facility like this. We we know that we are, are continuing to grow um, our community's identity with many events like uh, uh, Winter Wetlands, um, Wilmington Motor Raceway gliding, and we have more visitors coming to town. And having something like this as, a, as an addition for people to uh, come and stay and enjoy what Benalla has to offer and maybe stay longer and, and ongoing, um, it certainly um, does provide many opportunities for our community. So uh, I support the recommendation and I look forward to seeing it um, hopefully getting started. Thank you, Councillor King, Councillor Davis. Uh, while I'm going to support the, move, the the recommendation tonight, I'd love to have a crystal ball that put me 10 years in front to see exactly what we voted for tonight. Um, who would think that Benalla would do what it's done in the last couple of years, like real estate gone up on a house price, probably $150,000, $200,000 a house, and rentals where they are now, and we haven't got businesses, we've got the concrete factory and everything's taken off. We've, got, we've gone from having a few houses around to having no houses around for rent. We've got, there's no such thing as low, low rentals in Vanilla because uh, people want them. Um, I'm supportive in the fact that we do have to cater for, for, for everybody in the community and we definitely need to look at low cost housing. On the other hand, as I asked him the question and, the, and he didn't have to answer because it was an operating question, not a, not a planned development question. But the whole lot's going to revert around how, it, how the property's managed. And I think it's like every caravan and every motel you stop at. There's good ones and there's bad ones. I'd like to think that uh, our applicant tonight, um, who's going to put his, put his money on the line, will make sure that he has good management facilities or people in place and some good checks and balances make sure it's a success story because if it doesn't have a good manager it is not going to it'll fail I, it's, I, to me it's not going to fail i want to see it at, uh, at boom and, and go real well because there is a place for it we definitely do need it thank you thank you chair i'd love to uh, support this 45 recommendations and uh, i think all the speakers spoke before me said pretty much what to say. Um, I understand there were objections and we looked at the weekend ruling and there is a provision that can provide uh, affordable housing. So this provides Venela Tourist Park and Caravan Park, plus there will be some affordable housing as well. So that, so that is much needed as well. And I was delighted to hear the uh, developer is looking at providing electric charging opportunities or things like that. Um, it doesn't have to be electric chargers or big electric, you know, flashy chargers. It, nowadays, it's just a 15 uh, foot uh, plug base outside to park the, charge the cars. So that would actually help. So I hope that he'll go that part and take those comments on board and happy to support this recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I'd just like to say that I totally agree with what everyone said, and I think Councillor King and Councillor Davis touched on the importance of um, the good management. That that is what will break or or allow this to succeed, or, or let it go pear shaped. Without good management, it's just not going to work. And I think Rowan seems to be the sort of guy that is. And looking through the recommendations, um, there's and I'm reading recommendations is recommendation two, three, and four, which cover the management, and that will you know, be in place for, um, for when he starts work. So I feel confident the project will be successful as long as it's managed well. And I think he's the man to manage it well. And in the future, when it comes to licensing the caravan park, it's time when I'm sure Joel and his team will ensure that there is a manager on site all the time. So, I'm more than willing to, I'm more than happy to uh, recommend the motion. 
No one else wants to speak. Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I really thought hard about this, but I'm not going to recommend the motion. I, I think um, one is there's no guarantee for good management. And I think while we can say it now that there possibly will be, there's no guarantee. And we we'll just finish saying that that's really important. So I guess that's a big question mark for me. And I think the other thing um, is that it's not going to be, it's not all going to be completed sort of at the same time, it's in stages, which is fine. I understand that finance behind all of that, but it's not going to be a quick fix. So I just, they're, they're my main reasons. I'm still acknowledging that we need low cost housing for sure, but I think if, we, if it does the first couple of stages and then we can 10 or 20 um, cabins being put on there, maybe in two years time. I don't know, that's such a great solution. I know it's 10 or 20 cabins for people in fact, um, Yes, so now I won't be um, doing Thank you, Councillor O'Brien. We'll put that to the vote. Uh, all those for? Against? <coughs> Thank you, that's carried. Uh, item number four, building planning approval. Uh, uh, to Mr. Finn, for the yeah. way back up the front, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Present the planning and development committee in its monthly building and planning report activity report for October 2021. There were 12 permits, two amendments, and two big smart applications decided under delegation. There was uh, one application decided by the tribunal. There were four applications that were withdrawn. And one application is still pending a decision from the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Mm -hmm. Look towards the uh, building activity reported in the municipality. So we've been a total of 37 building permits issued, totaling approximately $12.17 billion. Another big month for building activities. Uh, and over the last Calendar year we've recorded for over hundred million dollars worth of project projects. Mm -hmm. um, that's an achievement that hasn't been done in the last 18, 19 years. Mm -hmm. The recommendation is on page 43. Thank you. Any questions of knowledge? Ladies? Um I've read it several times, upside down, back to front and sideways. And the VCAT hearing, we still don't have a, we still haven't got, we haven't got anything to hang our head on. Is that right? Don't have a decision as yet. They're not bound by statutory timeframes. No statutory timeframes. Do we have any secret information? They've been up to have a look at the site, or do we, do we know what's? Do we got because I mean these people obviously want to get on and do the building and the, the, the get get on moving and the objectors sort of the one that would like to know what's going on as well. So I mean can this just go into linger linger mode or yes, what? Can you take on that? No thank you, Mr. Sorry. Any other questions? Okay, the recommendation that the report be noted is page 43, move Councillor Byrne. Second to Councillor Davis. Would you like to speak, Councillor Byrne? Yes, I would like to speak. I'd like to um, say that it's fantastic to see $12.17 million of planning permits, uh, of building permits approved. It's great to see our schools, so um, the STEM building going ahead, the P12, and the um, Alterations for FCJ and also the construct 
the slab for our um, new funeral home. It's fantastic. Great report and great work, boys. Thank you. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Everyone. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, it's good to see two points. It's good to see that that, uh, that our staff are, are, are um, issuing the building permits over from practitioners. That's great. And um, will we see an increase on 12.16 million in 2022? Push it on over. Would anyone else like to speak? Okay, thank you all those in favour, carried. And I declare the meeting closed at 